Hello, my name is Rolando Morales Matos, and I'm gonna be playing uh, conga drums and uh, gonna do a composition, uh, a melodic composition, improvise on the spot with different themes. These are uh, uh, conga drums, the heritage from Africa, and uh, it's used a lot to uh, perform a lot of the Afro-Cuban, Afro-Caribbean, Afro-Puerto Rican, all throughout, and they're being introduced to a lot of the pop cultures and different type of uh, music. The Latin percussion has evolved and it has been incorporated in many different genres of music, including classical, uh, jazz, pop, etc. The Latin percussion includes a lot of a lot of many different instruments 
And the reason why is because it's you know that I unified all the different yeah uh, from all the Caribe, including South South America. So when we talk about Latin percussion, many people will think that it's just conga drums, timbales, and bongos. That's only one little part that is used for the Afro-Caribbean music. But there's a lot of instruments that came from Brazil, came from Chile, all the different stuff. Mexico, La República Dominicana, they got all the type of drums that also include on the Latin percussion. Certain rhythms are associated with specific countries. One of the biggest roots is Africa. If he has a drum, it's African. <laughs> and usually it takes more than one player to play on an ensemble to, uh, on the music. Then we'll have a conga player, a timbal player, and a bongo player. Then there's other extra instruments like maracas and things like that. That is also came from Africa. The richness of the Latin percussion have always enhanced and it's been used to enhance a lot of the music already uh, very popular. But it's been used for uh, rap music, reggaeton, uh, you know, I, I recorded for uh, something for Celine Dion and I was playing uh, some bongos and some shakers. Uh, Michael Bolton, those were singers of pop music that are, are very uh, big on their times. And they don't sing anything in Spanish, have nothing to do with uh, being Spanish or anything. But being musical and incorporating the colors and the rhythms that actually lift the spirit of the music. It's very interesting to say the least because a lot of the different cultures do very similar rhythms. Most of the different cultures, if we go to Arabic music and stuff like that, they also use three players to perform the percussion parts and they have a lot of different combinations and things, but it always comes back to the origin with all these different instruments that are coming here, Africa. Well, let's let's start with the uh, more simple patterns. Uh, let's play a mambo, regular mambo. So this is called like a baqueteo. So. So that pattern is is used a lot to play different type of uh, uh, the the mambo patterns, the cha cha patterns, the guajira patterns. All that are used with this instrument and with that pattern that I just played. The difference between those different style of music had to do with the tempos. So I could play cha cha cha, one, two, one. Oh, eh. Now I'm gonna play a song montuno. Same pattern, different tempos. And it goes like that for many different uh, things. I'm gonna use the same pattern now and I'm gonna be more towards this side of the country. Let's play some swing. And now the same pattern. Same pattern, with a little bit of a twist, a little bit of a color change, it's being adapted to play into those things.
Let's say we're going to play something funky. Same pattern with different colors into it. Another popular pattern that is used in Afro, 6-8. This pattern is being used a lot uh, with a lot of the jazz uh, players. They, they write a lot of music and they use this kind of pattern. Uh, Afro-Cuban, they combine it with different stuff and, and go about that route. A very interesting pattern that is actually uh, from uh, uh, DR, it's a merengue. And the merengue has two parts. Uh, one player will play a tambora, which is a two-member, it's a small drum that goes on the, on the lap. And it has a head in here, and it has a head in here. And the pattern goes like this. There's another player that will do a counterpoint and uh, two different parts together. The first rhythm that I gave you is used also on that. There's a, a pattern from Puerto Rico, it's called Bomba. Very African and uses an instrument called barril and they were actually literally barrels from drum and they will convert that into a drum. One of the most popular patterns that is used in the popular music is the bomba sica. It goes on. So one player will play that, the next player Third player will be following the dancers and improvising around. That's called bomba. Uh, another pattern from Puerto Rico is actually a uh, plena. And the plena is play three drums again, but this one are used uh, like panderos, which are actually look like tambourines without jingles. So the one player would play like this, holding the drum like this, and say, we'll do this bottom. The second drummer will be. The third player is the one that is improvising with the vocals and the dancers. And... Uh, then there's another very interesting pattern, which is one of the beautiful ones called Bolero. Bolero is a slow dance. And this rhythm is applied to many different styles of ballads and stuff. Uh, the, the origin of this comes from the classical music, actually. 
it's like uh, from the timpanis uh, and so it's developed and now it's uh, this kind of small drums comes in different sizes but anyway it's a very powerful instrument and actually it's almost like the drum set of the Latin percussion <laughs> I hope you enjoy this uh, little chat and uh, the little playing. Much luck to all of you and thank you for sharing.